Гагарин, крымский политический обозреватель. Пани Наталья Белицер, я прошу вас. И Валентина Самар здесь еще, крымский журналист тоже, я прошу вас присесть. Всем, кто нас смотрит сейчас онлайн и кто... Those who watch us online, who follow us uh, in the Facebook and Twitter, you can uh, uh, see the um, uh, online broadcasting, um, which is uh, uh, broadcast by Черноморска TV. A company. We are also waiting for Sanju Madilov, head of the department, to the president's envoy in the Crimean Tatars. Arsen, we are waiting for you. Olga Duchnich. Our country is a free country. Uh, if uh, there is a simultaneous translator from Crimean Tata, we can organize that. Not for today. But um, what we'll be talking about in the second part, uh, I uh, would like to introduce Olga Dugnich. In Crimea, she was known not as a journalist, but as a person who gives birth to the sense. In Kiev, she is not just giving birth to senses, but uh, relays them to those people who read uh, Nova Vremya publication. Arsene Jumadilov, as I presented the head of the aid department to the president's envoy in the Crimean Tatars. Uh, Natalia Belitsar, the expert of the Piliporlik Institute of Democracy, Valentina Samar, Crimean journalist, author of the question of national security program, uh, and Taras Berizovets from Crimea, first of all, person from Crimea, political analyst, director of the uh, project Free Crimea, Pavlo Kazarin, Crimean journalist. Uh, I will not say that you are Moscow uh, journalist, but you now are in Kiev. You write about Crimea. You help uh, people understand what's happening in uh, Crimean Peninsula. I am Alexander Yankovsky, general producer of the Chernomorska Black Sea Broadcasting Company. And uh, I would like to say that our Chernomorska TV and radio company is probably the only systemic TV project which talks about what's happening on the occupied territory of Ukraine and occupied Crimea. And we do that every day because I believe that uh, uh, the uh, Crimea as a topic is uh, gradually forgotten by Ukraine. Now it's clear it's an anniversary of occupation of Crimea, but Ukraine is not living uh, thinking that Crimea is Ukraine. We are trying to ruin this information blockade around Crimea. We work for both Ukrainians. We tell what's happening in Crimea, but we tell also to Crimean people about what's happening in Ukraine. We do it in simple words, and I hope that we manage in, uh, we succeed in that. In the second panel, we'll be talking not about how that was happening, how Crimean Peninsula was occupied, how about how long that was prepared. Even though uh, uh, the answer to the main question, how uh, whether real, it is realistic for Ukraine to get Crimea back, and it depends on answering the previous questions, how to back, get back the control over the part of its territory which was occupied by Russian Federation. We came to the conclusion that the beginning of occupation is basically the 23rd of February 2014. Uh, first of all, I would like to give the floor about what is uh, the way of uh, return of Crimea that could be by force, uh, via reintegration, uh, 
It could be some other way. I do not know what way it is, but every one of you who is present here, I'm sure, has uh, your own understanding of how Ukraine can return Crimea. Taras Berezovets, you're welcome. Thank you uh, for organizing this panel. Sivgil is joining us. Sivgil Musayeva Baravik, who's also from Crimea. We, I believe, we've been finished one same school, but, well, nevertheless, Kerch is a big city. There were 180,000 uh, in times of Soviet Union. Now there are less than 150,000 people. And once we are talking about reintegration of Crimea, Alexander, I believe we need to say that Ukraine needs to develop the legal mechanisms of return. What are the mechanisms of this return? This is the national strategy of reintegration of Crimea, which is to be passed by the uh, National Security and Defense Council, approved by the president, and then uh, passed as a law. Second, I believe, uh, is um, uh, what concerns the expanding the rights for IDPs and refugees from Crimea, the special status for them. Uh, we understand that the most um, pressure is exercised on representatives of Crimean Tatar people and representatives of small businesses out of 120,000 regi registered uh, um, uh, entrepreneurs, only 24,000 are left, uh, according to the occupational legislation. The head of the Union of Entrepreneurs of Simferopol says that for many entrepreneurs in Crimea, it is a shock that the taxes uh, for small businesses in Russia are four times higher than in Ukraine. And this data, uh, these figures uh, are better than any emotional signals. But uh, my very good friend that I met in Moscow, Pavel Kazarin, is uh, quite skeptical in the issue on uh, reintegration. He wrote uh, recently, he said that just define uh, who you are, uh, decide on who you are, hawks or pigeons. And it is important uh, to really uh, decide whether we are acting, uh, um, uh, applying rough measures, we close, uh, uh, cut off the water, gas, and food product supplies to Crimea, or we act by methods of soft power and then we need a different strategy which will be directed towards uh, uh, maintaining the loyal to Ukraine citizens uh, in the peninsula. There are several thousand of them. Uh, the core of them are representatives of Crimean Tatars. At the moment of occupation, there were 30,000 of them, 330,000 of them now. Uh, 10,000 left. Uh, some uh, others say that more than 30,000 left. Uh, and besides them, these are representatives of Russians, uh, most Crimeans, uh, Ukrainians, and others. Crimea has always been the most multi-ethnic region of Ukraine. They always had more than 100 uh, nationalities. Uh, there was not an, another uh, such unique region in Ukraine. And based on whether this will be a soft power or Hard hand, uh, we will act according to that. The journalists say, when will Crimea come back? The Crimea will be back only in two cases, and this should coincide first uh, in time. Vladimir Putin should physically uh, stop being the president of the Russian Federation. He either should be, should, should die or something else should be should happen, and Ukraine should become an attractive state, a successful state. Uh, from the point of view of economic uh, reforms and legal. We can talk, uh, say a lot that Crimea is uh, Ukraine, but Crimean people have never felt themselves being part of Ukraine, at least majority of them. And we shouldn't believe that uh, if this wasn't that, uh, then something will change now. Uh, the brains of people are washed. Uh, and uh, it is very difficult for people to accept new reality because they are not Ukraine any longer. But also many of them 
feel themselves like uh, suspended in the air. Even uh, uh, local leaders of self-declared uh, authorities uh, recognize that that is temporary situation. They do not invest into repairs of roads. Whatever they promise, they are not doing. The construction of this mythical, uh, mythical Kerch bridge, they uh, are planning now to build the tunnel, and maybe they will organize some catapult. But that is uh, uh, what uh, uh, people are joking about, even the citizens of Crimea. Talking about the time frame, uh, Ukraine is to be ready to take Crimea back from the weakened hands of Russian Federation. When will this happen? According to optimistic scenario, not earlier than in five years. Uh, according to pessimistic scenario, this may take 15 years. The most important in this situation is to define the status of the peninsula and understand what it will be. All the laws are to be uh, passed on the rights of the in, uh, indigenous people and uh, de facto the territory is occupied and uh, the euro is still ours. We need to recognize these things. And uh, another important thing. We need to promote the idea of our colleagues who say that uh, people in Crimea should have the representation in the Verkhovna Rada of Ukraine. Once we are talk saying that this is part uh, of uh, Ukraine, we need 12 MPs in the parliament from Crimea. There should be a special laws passed uh, and uh, to have such elections, to get all the IDPs registered, let them be 10,000 in Kiev, five in uh, Lviv, 15 in Kherson, and according to their registration, they should be registered according to the constituencies where they had to vote to make the special commissions for Crimean people who want to go out of Crimea. Let them vote, let 100% to 100% people 100 people or 200 people vote for the MP, but Mr. Zvegilski, who was elected by 800 voters of Donetsk Oblast, is that normal why he is a legitimate MP and the Crimean people have no one to address in the Verkhovna Rada? I believe that is unfair. Uh, Taras Brzez uh, from Crimea, and we can ask. Uh, uh, Mustafa Jamilev and uh, uh, NP from uh, Crimea, and uh, he's the only one, but uh, there are also an interfaction group of uh, Crimeans. So we're not the only ones. We're not alone. There is a, a group of people in the parliament uh, in Ukraine that represents uh, Crimea. Here's my question. Senior Musa Barovic, uh, chair of the project uh, of Ukrainian Pravda. In your opinion, how? how Ukrainian media, Ukrainian mass media, can do something for Crimea not to disappear from Ukrainian media space. For us, I'm not going to think about Crimea in, uh, only when there is uh, some celebration or some, uh, some date or some holiday. That's a very good question. Thank you very much, because for a year I tell that somehow we should uh, return Crimea to our information space or information dimension, but everything de depends and on interest of readers, on clients. And uh, I news about what is happening in Crimea and how about the prices, how they, the high they are, or if it's about uh, ar arrest of activists uh, or some criminal processes or criminal trials or uh, kidnapping of people. It cannot compete with uh, a news about that our troops uh, are in the pile, so in a ruin, and uh, they start to, uh, to take uh, troops again, or it cannot be compared with Minsk, can you say on the Minsk agreement? So the readers decide what is more important to them, what is a priority for them. That's why you have to speak about uh, news. An issue of uh, Crimea is not competitive. If there is no such a thing like, like uh, the last uh, story, And uh, when, when uh, there was a, an attack, a crash on um, 
Crimean Tata General Center all spoke about that. Uh, also, there is a big uh, problem that, uh, with information uh, coming from Crimea because, as we know, that people are afraid when they are on occupied uh, territories, they are afraid to share problems they are facing. And journalists uh, there, they are under the pressure and uh, that's why officially I cannot take an interview even or to ask to tell them what really happens is happening out there because uh, they understand if they, they start telling about that, uh, that uh, they'll be under the threat of the only Crimean Tatas uh, channel. And that's a huge problem. In my uh, opinion, how we can move, how can we develop, and we'll do that and we'll have a number of uh, materials about Crimea and uh, the story about uh, special projects and how what is so, how and what is changing in Crimea? We need uh, to write about Crimean military and who left the territory, where they are, what's happening to them. And uh, yesterday, when Nastya Rinkis came from Crimea, she will write what is uh, how life is different now in a year. And uh, she uh, she came very sad and uh, disappointed. She cannot even uh, speak to her, to her parents normally. That's a huge problem. And uh, this is what we can do. We need to compete, uh, to, co to compete with their quality content and analysis, and firstly access it to occupy the territory from mass media. Even media is a problem because uh, uh, transport limitations is not that easy uh, to get to Crimea. Not every journalist can, though. Anyone can reach, uh, go um, if they wish. What else? If to speak about in general about the country and uh, the issue of how to communicate with occupied territories, uh, it should be uh, there should be an answer. Should be this, uh, there should be discussion. Like uh, we had a big discussion about information ministry this week. They started to become a active. They got registered. Uh, they have uh, an official website, and I hope they will work not only for ATO but also for occupied territory in Crimea because it's very important to build content which can give a hope to Crimeans who are loyal to Ukraine because I feel I speak to people who are there from different groups and uh, of course uh, they have information uh, hunger they don't uh, they don't understand that they don't understand they feel like they are, uh, the state is indifferent to them. I hope something will be done in that direction because our authorities uh, don't uh, have, uh, cannot pay attention uh, to Crimea. They don't have time even for that, maybe. But we, even if they don't have such an opportunity, we must do it because uh, I, it's clear that uh, Donbass, events in Donbass are, are more important because there are victims and uh, casualties, uh, civilian casualties and uh, shell, and this should be resolved. And uh, it's good if uh, if you don't have time for Crimea, okay, maybe let's unite somehow volunteer organizations. And uh, during the last year after the occupation, there are a lot, of, a big number of them. And, but somehow they they are different. They are not united. Maybe it makes sense uh, to in the, in the administration or the president to bring together, to bring them all together to develop a general strategy. And for them, at least uh, they should uh, share problems of uh, IDPs, no job, no registration, no housing. What to do with the population which is there, which is there? What to do with those people who are under pressure by authorities there and uh, under persecution? And uh, the main question: How to return the Crimea? It seems to me that uh, the truth or some plan can be created if we uh, get together like now. Or, and there are some uh, many other organizations and uh, discussions. It can be 10, 12 hours. People, especially from Crimea, they are ready to, to find the time to develop a strategy to, and to decide uh, what to do. Thank you, Selim Musayev Barovic, and uh, she, uh, she's an um, editor of Ukraine, um, Ukraine Prada. I'd like to give a uh, uh, floor to Valentina Samara. She's a journalist from Crimea. I agree that it's very difficult uh, to sell Crimea. In a sense, uh, to sell it uh, to readers, be 
because uh, every day realities in Crimea are more and more different and they have less correlation with Crimea. But before, we can we can speak about information warfare, about counter propaganda, about informing. But we don't hear from the authorities what the government, from the government, what they're going to do, how they're going to do it in Crimea, what they want to say. Valentina Samar, chair of the Center of Regional Investigation, here's the question: Why, in a year after the occupation, we um, have not heard from our government how they're going to return Crimea? Because we ask very poorly. Uh, so we will agree. If Jones ask uh, the, the president, uh, prime minister, every day, the, the head of the Secretary and Defense Council and other top officials, uh, if we ask these uh, questions, then uh, daily in news and in top news, so there would be a topic of Crimea. So it's, we, we, we we ask Paul, and this is our main profession to ask questions and why. No, we have not um, be we were not able to move a Crimea topic of how to uh, uh, to stop occupation, which um, policy to have, which method to use. Uh, all of that, uh, all, all of that came down to that moment because of one reason: the authorities said uh, the previous and this one. I mean, uh, uh, before temporary government, uh, they are afraid of Crimea topic. And it seems to me that uh, for something to be uh, more, um, uh, to be changed, we need two, three things which uh, are free of charge to us as taxpayers. And they will not cost uh, anything uh, to the government, and we know that they have empty uh, budget. It will not um, influence on uh, on revenue rate. We need to, to do three uh, authorities. They should stop. Uh, st uh, they should not be afraid of uh, Crimean issues, and they should understand that sooner or later they have to solve this issue. That's why strong people they will not run away from flee from problems. They think how to solve problems. Second point: uh, we should, uh, they should stop lying and stealing, uh, robbing. As soon as we decide what to do with uh, Crimea, to occupy or to to trade with them. To continue their business and uh, to make uh, on occupation, to earn on occupation, uh, fill in and uh, also working for the budget, to fill in the budget and uh, of occupation and, and uh, you, you can. Uh, there's uh, a big uh, hole for uh, it's contraband because a lot of uh, goods are coming off from. Uh, the mainland and not to Crimea, but through Crimea, and that they violate all the sanctions on the laws. And the third one, then which costs nothing, but it's very expensive for us, the taxpayers, and to start uh, to com uh, apply, comply its decisions, uh, starting with the decision of the Circuit and Defense Council decision. And the cabinet of ministers was supposed to build a central body of power to work with uh, uh, temporal occupied territories, and uh, we can add. Uh, uh, which the some regions of Luhansk and Donetsk regions, and uh, that will be a unite one place which will generate uh, the work of all uh, of our bodies, government, governmental bodies, and they will synthesize, aggregate, etc., all necessary steps, activities, and uh, the authorities uh, should uh, do, because that is in the Constitution and the laws. That's their direct responsibility and their function. That's why we hired them. And third thing we should uh, do, I told, we should comply with the laws of Ukraine, and uh, we should start talking to Crimea. Maybe this is the first point, because when uh, all three components uh, are uh, uh, together in the head of a politician or, uh, or a public servants, and they, when they start thinking about this, they will understand that it's not normal. There is no communication of the state uh, with a part of its uh, territory. When uh, a year and a half ago we heard this, uh, it was a ground for many sarcasm and, and the motivator. Like to hear the voice of Donbass, now uh, Crimea doesn't hear the voice of Kiev. The absolutely the president can hardly produce uh, says Crimea in in Crimea. He he uh, mentioned that in uh, the UN or in uh, the US and uh, they take applause. 
but not in Ukraine. And it's not normal. We can we can say a lot what uh, the government should do, but uh, I would like to say we should not wait. Like volunteers will not wait in, uh, until the um, Ministry of Defense um, reforms and starts uh, providing, supplying everything from uh, footwear to uh, weaponry. We should uh, take that responsibility. Of civil society in, in, uh, in Kiev, in Kherson, and in other regions, because uh, a day before yesterday, we, Brussels, we were told that now it's impossible. Um, by the way, European Union will finance uh, programs uh, to build uh, Russian language content, uh, including for Ukraine and for Donbass and Crimea. This is very important for mass media that moved from Crimea in, uh, to Don in Donetsk, and they don't have a chance uh, to work there. But we need to, to cooperate. We should not wait until they call us to the administration of the president or the, or the ministry will ask what we think. And there are legal groups, advocacy groups. So they work wonderful. They uh, think tanks, and I agree with Andrei Klemenko, one of the authors of the strategy of return to Crimea, that uh, that when uh, the, the government uh, didn't notice it, and uh, that is uh, quite a good concept. Uh, they should uh, work with this, with it. And uh, as Andre told, and uh, there is a Maidan of Foreign Affairs by every ministry. There should be Maidan of uh, Justice or Maidan uh, in, of the Ministry of Social Policy, etc., etc. We should. Be more decisive. We don't know what other government needs Crimea, but we need it. it uh, we need uh, those people who are there. They need it, and uh, people who had to leave uh, the, the peninsula. So we don't. Politicians will find their place. Uh, they will take flags from our legs, and uh, they will carry it in front of the column. Valentina Samarov, head of the Center of uh, Journalist Investigation. That used to be Crimean project. Now it's. Uh, Ukrainian project, okay. It is very important uh, when uh, famous uh, uh, person in Rome was saying Carthage is to be ruined and finally Carthage was to be ruined. I do not hear from our civil servants saying Crimea is Ukraine. Uh, if they uh, finish each of their statements or presentations uh, uh, saying that Crimea is Ukraine, they will manage to convince him that not just us, but they will manage to convince the uh, global community in that. Why I'm saying that? Uh, I would like to give the floor to Pavel Kazarin and to hear his opinion on um, how Crimea and the conflict around Crimea, uh, the Western Europe, for example, looks at this issue, how Ukraine can remind the, the whole Europe, the whole uh, community that Crimea is Ukraine, that uh, uh, that was um, uh, unjust is that the standing member of the UN uh, Security Council by force took part of the territory from another UN member. How should Ukraine remind the whole global community that Crimea is Ukraine? I will uh, be shorter if I uh, uh, may. Uh, this week, um, it's good to talk about Crimea. There are so many events taking place, uh, uh, and the way events taking place uh, uh, last um, uh, year, but uh, I'm surprised on how Ukrainian mass media decide that, OK, let us uh, this week uh, discuss Crimea, and then after the 16th of March, they will say, OK, let's start discussing Donbass. But in Donbass, every day people are killed. They discuss Donbass every day, but uh, neither Merkel nor Holland nor Poroshenko mentioned Crimea. It is like Crimea somewhere in the periphery. 
but it is uh, what it uh, seems to us. But the situation is different. You re understand what it is. Uh, the mm, world uh, in the second half of the 20th century witnessed many situations like that. That is when one country starts a manageable conflict on the territory of another, uh, on an, of another country. Uh, it's like in Serbia, where uh, doing it on the territory of Bosnia and Herzegovina, uh, uh, Putin was uh, Milosevic and uh, uh, Plotnitsky and um, uh, others. They um, were um, like now. Like then, uh, the leaders of uh, Bosnia and Herzegovina. Well, why I'm saying that? Donbass is not unique. The world community knows many examples of how to address the conflict similar to Donbass. But Crimea is absolutely unique because of one reason. After 1945, in the world, there was certain consensus that at the international map new borders can be made, but uh, you cannot uh, uh, delete the old ones. You can take part of the territory from the state uh, like it was with the city, with uh, Transnistria, and so on. But in the world democratic, democratic community, they, it was uh, agreed that you cannot delete old borders, uh, but uh, you can uh, make new ones. When someone compares Crimea to Kosovo, that is wrong. Uh, Crimea was not, uh, Kosovo was not uh, joined to some other state, uh, like Crimea is, was not the next. Kosovo was not the next. Crimea, in this sense, is absolutely unique because there are no cases like that, and the world doesn't know how to address these situations. After 1949, 45, there were just five annexations. The first one, Indonesia, occupied Western Timbur. That was the Portugal colony, and uh, in. Uh, the second case was when India next Goa from Portugal. Again, they, everyone closed their eyes to that. That was the disintegration of colonial system. Then Israel annexed uh, Holland Heights from Syria. Then there was another attempt, uh, the fight for uh, Falklands when Argentina was trying to get uh, islands back from Great Britain, then 91, 90 was attacked at Kuwait uh, by Saddam Hussein. Uh, uh, the, um, Kuwait was liberated and Saddam Hussein fall under sanctions, fell under sanctions. Crimea is unique because unlike all the previous cases, that is the story about the 21st century, about Europe, and when it seems to us, and we can hear in Ukraine that the main thing is uh, uh, the war should stop, and these people in Crimea, if they don't want to leave them with us, let them live like they want. But maybe we wouldn't want to get Crimea back. But for the players who are in the role of the world gendarmes, uh, it is the matter of principle for Crimea not to be part of Russia. Maybe it's not so important for them. Uh, for Crimea to be part of Ukraine. But if uh, Crimea is uh, part of Russia, stays as Rus part of Russia, that means that uh, many other territories can be annexed like Crimea. And maybe we will not want to get Crimea back whether people in Crimea want to get back to Ukraine or not, that is the story. Like, uh, not a lot depends on the desire. Crimea is an architecture of the world uh, security. Vladimir Vlad Putin buried Yalta system and put uh, the monument to it in Yalta. 
But those people who think in categories of international law, they will not turn back from Crimea, turn their faces away from Crimea. If Merkel does not talk about Crimea, if Hollande doesn't talk about Crimea, Obama doesn't talk about Crimea, that doesn't mean that this is not important for them. Crimea, maybe they will not find uh, Crimea on the map, but it is important for them as a matter of principle. And we need to take it into consideration. We need just to look back at uh, how uh, the world configure, how the world is uh, designed today. And in the center of any hurricane, there's so-called zero zone where it's always quiet. And in the center of every tornado is always a quietness. Uh, the wind can uh, uh, take the cars um, into the air, but in the zero zone, it's very quiet. So that is what the peninsula is now, because more or less everything is quiet there, but around it, there are all these geopolitical winds which take cars into the air. That is what I wanted to share with you. Thank you, Pavel Kazarin, political analyst. Despite uh, that he is a uh, center of a cyclone, and also there is also a very uh, tough uh, those who come from Crimea now. And, and since uh, that's um, boxy air, If, Pavel, I thought that you would uh, speak about uh, that uh, you change your op opinion and there is a Crimea on the agenda of the world, but thank you very much. It exists in, on the agenda of the world, but not on the Ukrainian agenda. That's uh, correct. Thank you. As all, uh, you are eloquent. Thank you. So, Pavel touched a very important issue, and uh, that is about um, international experience. Uh, experience of Hor Croatia, Bosnia, Bosnia Kosovo, uh, the experience of solving those uh, conflicts. Is it, uh, can, can, is it applicable for Crimea and Natalia Bielas? I would like to give the floor, and I would like to hear the answer. Can we use experience, uh, that experience uh, to solve the issue of uh, Crimea? I would say that uh, Pavel absolutely precisely pointed that, at least in Europe, a case of annexation of uh, somebody's uh, territory is unique, absolutely, and that's why any experience, by the way, Dayton agreements uh, are not considered uh, by uh, uh, as a success story. Kosovo is an exception because of known reasons. That's why now we will not uh, get deeper in that. That's true. Annexation of uh, somebody's uh, ter territory, and in addition, in a difference uh, to frozen conflicts and unrecognizable pseudo new state uh, formations, de facto of states is not has nothing to do with uh, the case of Crimea. But here, I would like to to look at the last uh, uh, touch, the last point uh, from what Valentina well, told. I would like to draw attention uh, to to that point. I absolutely agree with you that uh, a standard, more or less, uh, all this, uh, a rhetorical question, why the state, the government hasn't uh, done, and then uh, two dots and uh, the list of what uh, it, the government didn't uh, do, and it was supposed to do that. And uh, we are not under the situation, circumstances when we uh, wait, and uh, from time to time, re re remind to the government, uh, the experience of the last year showed that if we have some strong joint uh, goal, and if we wanted to uh, reach it, and uh, first of all, we need to rely on our efforts to develop stra strategy and te technical steps. And anything uh, for Crimea and formation policy, etc and uh, to offer or even to impose it to the government, forcing to start a dialogue with those who 
have a product on that uh, topic and not to sit and wait when somebody will bring it to us and uh, then we'll criticize or uh, accept it. What is necessary to improve efficiency of such a strategy? It was mentioned, but once again, there are a lot of strong analytical, uh, a lot of good think tanks, NGOs, and uh, advocacy groups with lots of experience and international experience. And uh, but in the context of Crimea, all of them are uh, they work different, and uh, each of them has uh, great potential. They have their own partners, their ex executors, and uh, their sponsors and their friends. And it seems like that is enough. Once again, under these uh, conditions, it's not sufficient. And all separate projects and efforts and activities or activity will have to be somehow coordinated. And how? But how? It depends not on sponsors, not on the state. Uh, public bodies are responsible for directions in the state policy. But on us, that depends on us. As, um, as, as a, an example of a positive shift, I would like to give an example of a press conference on uh, human rights in Crimea. First time it was uh, not separate uh, from the uh, Crimea, uh, Crimea field mission on human rights, not uh, Crimea uh, Tata Cell Advocacy Group, but, but uh, a, strong, a strong group, uh, this is a Ukrainian Helsinki uh, group on human rights. First time they spoke at the conferences, three of them, they made a report on their results and they developed a joint vision and uh, they suggested later than their, that vision. What should be done after? Low, uh, low pressure, higher pressure on all, the, uh, to all human rights in Crimea. That is a cynical uh, that's a very, very strong card in the hands of Ukraine. How to use it? First of all, moving from such uh, very broad, abstract uh, generalizations, I would like to say the following. All of us, we have some strong partners, colleagues abroad in leading countries of the world, and they need concrete information when when uh, there is a great uh, a lot of information which exists uh, mostly and, and until now in Ukraine in Ukraine and uh, uh, Russian a concrete proposal a consortium of uh, sponsors uh, for for a narrow, clear uh, project. There should be a pool of translators uh, who will uh, keep a track. Call for uh, the most important events in Crimea, not only uh, in, the f in the field of uh, human rights and violation of all the freedoms, movement of uh, the structures of the civil society, but uh, the most important issues. And then they, we could decide which uh, which um, English language media printed or some other we have some context everywhere which uh, could must be must be sent, sent on a regular basis and it's clear it doesn't matter how genius uh, the strategy of returning Crimea Ukraine develops it independently it will never be able to realize it. So the process of development of an efficient uh, strategy all, all the time should be followed, should be for, accompanied uh, with active uh, activity on the international arena. And that not only the professional journalists uh, must be responsible for that and media experts, but uh, or only government or only on uh, on legal organizations and uh, we can do that and 
and as uh, as a concrete uh, proposal, what uh, in this sense uh, should be done now? Here yeah, I have I have such a, a very interesting Crimean document, uh, which is named a decree of the head of the Republic Crimea about a, uh, a plan of uh, opposition to ideology of terrorism. There was just uh, there was it was mentioned in Ukrainian media, but if we read attentively this uh, document, 17 pages, it means uh, growth of threats for all political, social, active po population, and for those uh, who stay in Crimea. And uh, two, now we should. Uh, and the only uh, we should uh, create alarm, and uh, there was uh, only one publication of Gali uh, and a very good analysis on uh, Kharkiv, Kharkiv uh, advocacy group. That's it. So, I just want to inform you that according to this uh, big document uh, uh, of this plan, all. All bodies of so local civil governance and etc. through territory of Crimea should prepare uh, a monthly reports and uh, what they what they did to fight ideology of terrorism. By the way, uh, last pages, uh, three pages, uh, are statistic uh, information about uh, about. Uh, about activities and the regional uh, uh, targeted uh, programs uh, to uh, counter, counter fight uh, terrorist uh, ideology. You understand what it means in the context uh, of the development of the situation in Crimea, and here you can uh, we can play. We uh, can uh, make this pro program more important and now there is a horrible situation with uh, human rights in Crimea and there is a, um, a threat which is much uh, higher I have concrete th these are my concrete uh, proposals for all who who can uh, participate in this um, in this dialogue and it should be done and my last comment here we heard that that there is um, only two scenarios a tough line and soft line. But it seems to me that this is a little bit as uh, it's a simplification. In case of Crimea, it's not a choice uh, either or. It seems to me we have to bring it together and to the development of a real uh, policy of uh, soft policy of uh, soft appeal for those who stay in Crimea, who live there, who who uh, want to be uh, citizens of Ukraine, who are loyal uh, to Ukraine, but absolutely tough uh, policy to form more uh, public servants of Crimea or leaders of uh, law enforcement bodies and uh, to that big business and uh, which was mentioned, which uh, without uh, borders uh, functions there. So. One element doesn't exclude uh, one of these approaches, but they uh, combine them. And finally, what uh, we have to, to base uh, all those uh, who work uh, on the strat on strategies and tactics uh, of returning uh, Crimea. In my opinion, uh, the first first of all, results, representative, uh, true public opinion polls. Uh, Without that, without dynamics, uh, it's very difficult uh, to develop uh, uh, to develop data. Many times it was mentioned here about uh, the shortcomings, uh, shortcomings of the over poll and or study in the framework of uh, project of Taras Brezovets. Let me let me continue. And uh, professional public posters, and not only I, as a former dissident, uh, I can uh, witness that uh, a poll by phone 
In the context of a uh, real situation in Crimea, uh, a priori it cannot, uh, it cannot be true, a priori. Yes, there is no, f- no phone connection. I am not an advocate. Uh, tell us, I can give you the floor, but we maybe will not continue this. I, j- I want to give you this uh, very important form of uh, initiative. Today, the form of uh, uh, civic initiatives uh, in this hotel. Irina Bikeshkina, quite known to all of you, she said from Democratic Initiative Sashib. She gave the last data of uh, public opinion polls, including uh, Donbass, Donetsk region, not only under the jurisdiction of, of Ukraine, but on, on, on occupied territories. It's because they have, they have the real network of uh, interviewers uh, who are not by phone, but uh, who know the methods and uh, they know the respondents and they know how to do that. And uh, and quite interesting data she uh, provided. And uh, I, she, she confirms that, she states that that network of interviewers, uh, she has it in Crimea also. So it means that there is a real chance to hope to get such public opinion studies and that would could serve as a reliable base for further steps and activities. Thank you for your attention. Natalia Bilitzer, thank you, the expert of the Piriporlik Institute for Democracy. Now, Pavel Kazarin needs to leave, unfortunately. He says, Pavel said everything, we say goodbye to you, Pavel. Uh, And now, Taras, would you like to continue the discussion? Frankly speaking, if you just wanted to uh, reply, because that was addressed to you, in fact, Uh, All the sociological surveys which were made by JFK, our best um, um, best thing we did was our sociology, the Churkin quoted it, but uh, only one, uh, everyone paid attention to one question, and there were more than 30 questions like that, and key questions, like Sivgil said, yeah, was the question whether the Crimeans wanted uh, independent new Ukrainian media. It was about radio, TV, and uh, websites that would be covering the topics of Crimea, and 60% said, yes, we want. And talking about what you mentioned, I can uh, uh, tell you that... Uh, uh, the ministry is working hard uh, on uh, uh, developing mass media for Crimea. The money will be not from the budget, will help that in that. The money will come from uh, international donors, from Western governments, and these will be big projects which will be launched, and it will be about supporting of existing projects which are known and new projects. Uh, as to sociological surveys, I agree with you. I wanted very much uh, to uh, do the sociological survey by Bikeshkin. Lavrov will not quote it, but uh, I don't want these interviewers to have uh, um, this um, uh, uh, survey um, in uh, uh, detention facility, and with GFK that was the case because uh, all the interviewers refused to conduct such sociological survey, and uh, of course it was impossible to do it uh, over the phones uh, of Russian uh, uh, mobile operators. I don't want this expert uh, community, which is here in Ukraine, people who understand on the problems of Crimea don't want us to have some conflicts or arguments. There are not so many of us. When we say that uh, 50,000 people from Crimea moved to Ukraine, to continental part, I believe that realistic figure is 20, 25, 30,000. But we are dealing with such an important thing. 
they have invented even a new term. We are not forced uh, uh, displaced persons, but twice displaced. Well, the National Bank of Ukraine, but its resolution 629 made everyone non-resident. Myself, as a person in, uh, who lives in Crimea, I could not change dollar. I understand now no one can, change, can exchange dollars. I have no dollars, but I cannot go to the bank. I cannot pay even anything because I'm not resident. They cannot transfer money to me. No one can transfer money to my card or my account because I'm non resident. I cannot buy a car and register it. I cannot buy an apartment because I'm non-resident. I mean, there's even no uh, chance. Even if I had money, I cannot take loans, cannot take credits, uh, I cannot uh, send money, why transfer money, neither abroad, no one can why transfer money to me because I'm non-resident. And that was done not by Russian Federation, that was done by the state of Ukraine. This is not a minute of hatred. I'm trying to understand what is important here. People who are in Crimea who are pro-Ukrainian, they are ready to uh, be patient. They say that, okay, if it is so difficult for the state, we understand that the state has so many problems besides us, but just explain why you do it. Don't do it worse for us. And when they say that 50,000 moved, these are like twice uh, displaced people. These are people who come, get registered uh, as if they are displaced uh, people, and then they go back and live in Crimea so that they have the chance to use their banking account in Ukraine. And that is why we have these numbers. Another person I would like to ask a question to Arsene Jumadilov, a head of the aid department to the President's envoy of the Crimean Tatars. Arsene, I would like to ask you a question. Uh, the um, institution of the President's envoy on the Crimean Tatars, did it help resolve the problems of Crimean Tatars in Ukraine? Did it make uh, uh, has it made this problem more known for Ukrainians and how it affects the life of Crimean Tatars in Crimea, not just in Ukraine? I am for this. I understand I will be um, reacting as the state a little bit. You were saying that the state is doing nothing. I will tell what is happening in reality. First, we are dealing with the state. Uh, which has very little resources, financial and organizational. We understand uh, what was the situation at the beginning of 2014. There was no state. The state is being built from the scratch, especially when we are talking about Crimean direction. Everything is so bad. There were two institutions set up which are interested in Crimea Department on Sivastopol and the Autonomous Republic of Crimea and the Secretariat of the Cabinet of Ministers of Ukraine, where five persons work. And the uh, President's envoy on Crimean Tatars, uh, and there's the aid department there where also five persons are working. When we are talking about the state which has to do something in relation to Crimea, we are talking about 10 persons. The state apparatus uh, usually would have bigger uh, resources, organizational, financial media. We just don't have them. That is the picture as it is. Yes, on paper, there's the state service on Crimea and Sevastopol. It was set up in July. The competition for uh, the vacancy of the head was announced but has never been held, and so this uh, service hasn't started uh, working, and it doesn't work because uh, of the reasons we do not know, we do not understand what it, uh, what it is related to, but who has the resources? The society has, uh, the civil society has the resources. 
We're talking about dozens of organizations which have media support. They have financial support. They have uh, connections with donors. They have a good organizational resource. We're talking about hundreds of people who know what they're talking about when they are talking about Crimea. And it is nice that we are all here today because that was a a civil um, uh, initiative, initi civic initiative that was the initiative uh, supported by UN, and uh, from these small steps and right directions, we can start uh, saying something, doing something with Crimea. Now, what needs to be done? The stra there's uh, no strategy on Crimea. We do not need the strategy on Crimea when just 10 people are dealing with Crimea because there will be no one who will be able to implement it. When we have the state service on Crimea, when it has all the resources to implement their mandate, then yes. Uh, it has been mentioned, the strategy of return of Crimea, which was drafted by Maidan of Foreign Affairs. Uh, but uh, uh, you say, why uh, anyone took it? Uh, there's no sense of decision making in this uh, relation in the state. So what we are doing? There is this aid department, uh, and uh, our tactic is to make correct, uh, small correct, uh, small steps in correct direction. Uh, there was initiated and supported by many experts, many agencies, the uh, draft law on indigenous people of Ukraine, which will regulate the status of Crimean Tata people. Next to me. Natalia Bielitzer is she's a known expert and I would like to thank her for participating in development of this draft. Majlis of Crimean Tata people and Mr. Rifat Chubarov initiated drafting of the new constitution of Autonomous Republic of Crimea. Why do they do we need it? It will not work today, but that is our instruction that when Crimea uh, is back, will start immediately working. Crimea will be back to Ukraine. We will not have time to think about what to do with it. And if we do not uh, decide it in advance, then there will be no one to extinguish the fire, so to say. Because we'll have all these uh, problems, Buranovsky, Babushki, and Russian peace, uh, world, and so on. We need to prepare the instruction uh, what we believe the new Crimea should be. And uh, our leadership, the president of Ukraine, recognize. Uh, re re talk about Crimea not just uh, in the days uh, of uh, on some days. On the 23rd of February, uh, Poroshenko um, was talking about Crimea when Chibi Jahan was uh, shot. Uh, uh, well, that, when in, it was the day uh, 100 of years ago, uh, the leader of Crimean Tatars was shot dead. And I would like to thank the civil society that initiated that address. And we, as the aid department of uh, Mr. Jamilev, we uh, also joined that uh, uh, to make the message correct, because people in Crimea hear that and postscript them. Don't. Uh, uh, touch upon the mechanism of self-implemented uh, 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 prophecy or uh, uh, forecast, uh, but uh, sometimes our people in Crimea, they get disappointed in us and they turn away from us, and we would like this to happen. Arsene Jumadilov, head of the department, uh, 
to the president's in envoy on the Crimean Tatars, Olga Duchnich, the journalist. I would like to ask you the question, how to talk to people in Crimea to preserve the loyalty of those people who are loyal to Ukraine, not to lose the people in Crimea who are far away from politics. And there are many people in Crimea who say, OK, uh, which flag is there uh, doesn't matter. The main thing is that there are no uh, shootings anywhere. First of all, uh, this is a big fundamental problem of Crimea. And uh, this is uh, uh, the process of social comparison. Crimea has always been insulated from other parts of Ukraine. If between the oblasts of Ukraine there are some com communication flows, you can go somewhere and understand what's happening. Crimea was the final point of communication. There was always their own policy. And uh, that was always a complicated issue. And people in, uh, from Crimea, because they uh, have such a high respect to themselves, it was very difficult for them to see what's happening on the continental part of Ukraine. And the problem uh, was when a person could uh, go somewhere. If you look at the statistical information, how many people from Crimea visited other countries, we have problems uh, because we know that uh, uh, it is uh, uh, next to impossible to get to Crimea. People have problems uh, uh, with crossing this uh, control point in Chengar, and even those people who stay in Crimea even those people who are loyal to Ukraine who are apolitical and neutral. Well, now the information policy of Russia is based on that. They say, OK, look at Ukraine and the war is going on and you have no war here. Be happy. And this is wrong when we violate the possibility for people to see anything else outside their region. And there are two tasks to be addressed. First, and I see it not just uh, myself, but uh, looking at the experience of Georgia that has been living uh, for uh, 25 years with these problems. What's happening? Those people who live on uh, liberated territories, they forget that there are people somewhere who are also part of our state, and they understand. I listen to all my colleagues. It's difficult to sell uh, Crimea, uh, but why not do it via culture? There should be some projects which will tell about what Crimea is. Ahtem Sitablaev makes a Haitarma film about Crimean Tata people, the cultural projects which could support the topic of Crimea so that people do not forget about Crimea and the territory of Ukraine. We also can work on uh, that, what is Crimea. Uh, when I would come to uh, Kiev two years ago, people would ask me, are these Crimean Tatars still uh, killing you? Um, and um, again, supporting people who arrived to continental part of Ukraine, the process of adaptation. To get adapted to the life on the continental part, people should forget about what was happening to them in Crimea. There should be different policy in relation to people who moved away, but they should remember that Crimea is still there. The same should be done uh, in relation to occupied territories. Nothing could be done, I mean, talking about political project or legal project, but uh, we need to provide information to preserve the chance for people. Uh, many people who live in Georgia, in Abkhazia, they understand that it's easier to get 
medical aid in Georgia than in Russia. Uh, Ukraine should create the mechanisms and the person always go where it's easier to address everyday needs. Ukraine should create the mechanisms thanks to which it will be easier for people from Crimea to resolve their problems. The sanctions which are there, maybe new can be imposed, which will make impossible to resolve some issues on the territory of Crimea, but will make it easier for people from Crimea to resolve it on the continental part of Ukraine. Thank you. Olga, Olga she's a journalist. We have about 15 minutes. Uh, if, there is, uh, if our audience has questions, please ask your questions. I would like uh, to ask Natalia Benitez uh, to comment. You told uh, that uh, there is not enough of materials uh, about Crimea in uh, advocacy materials in abroad and also in uh, English. In I was abroad and uh, I wanted uh, to give them the report. Uh, all experts uh, have them. Such reports. Um, of uh, civic uh, groups, and they have from you what they really need, what can be done, and what we can dis discuss in New York, uh, Geneva, and Strasbourg. That uh, they, there is not enough of competent international mis mission respected uh, that could be trusted. UN Mission on Human Rights, which uh, observed events in Ukraine, also from Russian authorities that they should uh, provide access uh, to Crimea. Why? Because our materials, uh, if we translate them uh, f to English, less uh, trust, they have less of, less of trust, and uh, they, need, uh, to, they need to collect uh, facts. Not just to, the world should have access and uh, So there should be international monitoring organizations. It's pretty, it's pretty one uh, one person left, but I, will look at, I was in Kosovo and know about background. Examples are not good for Crimea because uh, Crimea and Tatars have showed uh, that despite uh, with uh, political Ukrainians, uh, different religion, different uh, ethnic origins of people but uh, it's not a key a key in the conflict like in bosnia and serbia and Kosovo. thank you so the question you heard that uh, there will be some content uh, for crimea produced by european eu what do you mean that one which would uh, in ukrainian channels like euronews or how they will reach a Crimean audience, could you tell us? I told that I uh, just discussed the issue, and probably you heard about uh, the statement of Mogherini that uh, there will be uh, there will be content content uh, for Russian Russian speaking audience in Baltic, Baltic countries, Moldova, etc. And please understand, we all. Russian. We are two language, three language speakers, and our children speak five languages. So it's about not of a prevalent of one country per production of such a content because uh, people don't have a choice now in Baltic uh, countries or in other countries of former USSR because the content is produced uh, and trans transmitted. Uh, it's not mass media, that is just uh, mass propaganda. But now they study this issue and there are asp uh, the experts how, where to be, that to be produced, who, I cannot answer your question. So it's on the level of this question, but I believe that uh, we should also say that uh, such contact is produced uh, here. 
When I told that we don't need to uh, wait for someone to do it, we should go and go. We went to the center and we brought a Chernobyl TV radio captain. Now there are two satellites, uh, they they are uh, working for Crimea, but uh, but also for, for Europe and for America. And that content goes in Russian. In two months we did uh, what I don't know how long this, the government would uh, would uh, try would so on three four uh, uh, grounds they they broadcast uh, transmit that uh, uh, content and uh, online and also uh, through cable networks uh, more questions please okay if there is no question then we will summarize our discussion I uh, my opinion how to return Crimea in Russian Federation they say okay we'll hold uh, some referendum an, an honest referendum and that will de we'll decide what to do with Crimea this is a very interesting uh, moment I would like to ha say the following to such people again to got your, your car your house your uh, wallet and they, they say we, because of the court, we can uh, court, uh, the court decision. We cannot re return all of this. We, you know, again, we should hold the referendum and and to s decide. And if we disagree, sorry, it's democracy. It's the referendum, and will not return it. So Crimea should be returned to Ukraine without any referendums, without any condition, unconditional. I believe. No unconditional, no referendums for a return of Crimea. Like it was taken without uh, any referendum because what was happening in March is not a referendum. And we will not say that there was a referendum because there was no referendum in March 2014. And uh, also without Russian Federation, without a uh, referendum, we should look for the ways how to return Crimea back to Ukraine. Now I'd like to give the, f uh, the floor to each of you. If you want to say something, something important we wanted to say to uh, Crimea and so to Ukrainians interested in uh, Crimean issues as well. You know, I never. Someone who doesn't have a goal, he doesn't know where to move and fails. Let's be realistic. New Ukraine doesn't know what it wants, except it wants to live uh, like in the EU and to be defended like all the rest of NATO countries. But uh, people think little about uh, duties and taxes and uh, limitations, restrictions countries have. Who? Are members of NATO for decades. So in Europe, it's un it's impossible when someone makes money and uh, receive them in annual loads because when they didn't un unpaid taxes and uh, this money which went didn't went into defense budget and uh, this but it uh, doesn't go to uh, salary of uh, police and if uh, public servants are uh, paid uh, poor, poorly, there is a guarantee for corruption. The same with that about Crimea. If we don't know why we move, if we don't know objectives, we cannot run away from the topic of its return. So the strategy is necessary. Just to understand which uh, we need public institutions uh, to build, it's uh, thank God. We have Mr. Jamilev. He's, uh, like a Don Quixote, uh, who is fighting alone, but he's the only one. Uh, he will be. He's not enough. He needs assistance. Let us. Uh, Arsen has said uh, great words. Civic society does it need civic, uh, civic budgets or anything? There are enough on us for that uh, process uh, to move. Thank you, Valentina. I absolutely agree with Taras that he didn't say that's the first, but I believe the first thing to happen is to answer questions. What was the main reason that allowed uh, to do it so easily in Crimea? Political corruption. Until there were, unless there were all those um, people who could uh, uh, be used in this scenario, nothing would have happened. And unfortunately, because of that, 
no conclusions and no conclusions have been made out of that and the political corruption leads to business corruption and it still hampers uh, us from living in a different country the country that we have uh, uh, already um, uh, gained the right to live in we need to stop using the topic of crimea to enrich yourself enrich your group and as soon as we stop that then i believe it will be much easier to resolve that problem uh, thank you natalia bilitzer thank you i want to address uh, the numerous friends, uh, colleagues uh, from Crimea who believe that we forgot about them, that we do not pay much attention. Dear, we, do not, we have not forgotten. We love you. We remember and we promise all together to do everything possible to support you somehow, to help you especially in all these uh, 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 things with the crossing of administrative border, let us all together jointly organize better future for Crimea. Uh, let us uh, do it as the whole of Ukraine. I would like to support Natalia Bilitzer and continue the address to our compatriots in Crimea. Uh, we hope this will not last long. The invasion that you are dealing with will soon finish. There's no alternative to that. That's the only way because the whole world is on the side of Ukraine. 99% of all of us have never had anything to do with the occupation. We will uh, once meet in a free new Ukraine. Crimea is Ukraine. Olga Duchnich. I also would like and I join my colleagues saying uh, I want Crimea to be back to Ukraine soon, but only I don't believe that this process will be quick and easy. I believe that we, like many countries with, uh, which survived through such situations, have to get ready to a lengthy process, to a long game, and we need to try uh, the topic of Crimea to become the topic for the whole country, but not just for people who moved from the territory of Ukraine, but those people who moved from Crimea to continental Ukraine they can make this agenda so interesting that it's not just about the news about how bad it is in Crimea, but that Crimea is an interesting region and that for any continent, island or uh, peninsula is so interesting, especially Crimea, which has such an interesting culture. Uh, in conclusion, uh, to what my colleagues said, uh, I believe it is very important, uh, and that is what we haven't mentioned. We addressed Crimean people, but I would like to address Ukrainians, the citizens of our country. I believe uh, uh, much depends on their desire to get Crimea back. It depends on every person who lives there, and in principle, if there is an interest uh, because I see it less and less, I feel it less and less. People have so many problems, devaluation of Grivna, Donbass, and Crimea is not on the agenda. But I want to say, it started from Crimea. All this uh, difficult year for the country started with Crimea. And uh, I am sure that the key uh, for resolving all the problems in the country is in Crimea. I am convinced that it started with Crimea, that it will end up with Crimea. And the sooner the better. And uh, one more. I believe that many will not understand, but still I believe that if you find time money and desire to uh, 
have some rest uh, uh, this year to go for holidays. I would like to invite you to Crimea, to go to Crimea, to talk to people. That is what they lack. You need to answer their questions, to ask how they live. Those threads which were uh, broken are to be restored. Uh, the threads of normal human communication, that's what they're looking for. For who it is safe, especially young people. We have three minutes left. Addressing Ukrainians, I wouldn't want, I didn't want to say that, but my people I know, who I know in Kyiv, they believe that there are traitors in Crimea. I address the whole population. This is not so. Uh, be able to forgive even those people who were brainwashed and who committed mistakes. And like Valentina said, that is very important what she said. Thank you. We'll complete our discussion. You could watch it uh, online on uh, in uh, uh, Chernomorsk uh, Broadcasting Company. I believe we are doing very important thing. I say that we are doing very important th thing when we tell to Ukrainians about what's happening in Crimea. If you are not um, a citizen, if you do not participate in the civil life of your country, then they uh, take away your rights, your freedoms, uh, people you know, or relatives, could be put to prison, and you will be left without any means. Uh, thank you. Thank you all who watched us online on Chernomorska Broadcasting Company, and thank to the participants of this panel. I hope that we attracted the attention to Crimea of all our big country, Ukraine. Crimea is Ukraine.